Okay guys, in this video we're going to rebuild the F-35 because it crashed. This model was heavily built, so with thanks to the bamboo lab, we printed a new one really fast. This video is also a great opportunity to rebuild this swiveling nozzle. I've received so many questions from you guys, so let's rebuild this F35 with a new build factor nozzle. But first, we need to clean up these parts for the tail section. I'm really happy that I can reuse the landing gear. So let's go to my project box and see if we get out some nice landing gear parts. Yes, we have. So the next step is to clean these parts for fitting the landing gear and to clean the tail section and start assembling the factor nozzle. So meanwhile standing, it's really smart to prepare a new batch of PLA parts, which is printed with the Bamboo Lab printer, which is insanely fast. Here we go, the parts are downloaded into the, the Bamboo Lab. And yeah, this model saves a lot of time. It automatically changes spools, cleans it up, and this is a quite handy, I call this the poop can. So all those parts which are cut it off they are collected in the can so you, it's really easy to access it just a tip let's go so to clean all these parts I'm using a simple knife to move the excess filaments But it's worth doing it. <laughs> Here we go. The same for this part. By hand you can remove the support structures. Okay, it's also really important to measure the weight of these parts. So for example, this part is 14 grams, 17 grams. So this is quite good. So let's continue the retract holders. And these are nine grams. Okay, let's continue assembling the thrust vector. Okay, let's start with the gear. This side. And should fit fits really nicely. It also gives strength to the part. So let's glue it. For gluing all my parts, I'm using Sap Agap. Yep, it aligns very well. So let's glue it. This is the motor. Okay. 
Let's install these holders, same way. I'm going to use second glue to fix them. Very well. There you go. Let's go for the next part. So this front piece is for the rudder servo, this is for the pit servo when you're going in 3D mode flight. Make sure to align this hole with this tube when you're building it. Because this servo goes all the way through. So before I install the EDF, in this case the JP70s 6S, good for 3 kilos of thrust, really lightweight, it's only 225 grams. I always put some tape around it. Like so. Make sure this is really tight. And then slide it in. Push it all the way through until this ring. Don't put it too deep. 
And then we use a small drip of glue. Okay, next step is to install this nozzle. And put a little bit drip of glue over there. Here you have it, your trust factory nozzle for the F25. Next step, let's implement the servos. Okay guys, before installing the servos, make sure to zero them. So I'm using this high tech. And let's put it on 1300. Or 1400 in case. 19, 11, 1500 is middle. Yep. So I'm gluing the servos and I always leave them on. To the servo tester and push this rod all the way through and click it on the linkage. There you go. Let's do an initial test. Almost perfect. Yeah. There you go. Well, the pit servo is installed. Make sure to align it very well that it fits the tube. And let's proceed now with the rudder servo. We have a calibration tool which you can print and we can also calibrate it uh, more accurate afterwards. So a rough alignment is all fine. Make sure when this horn is 90 degrees, it must be parallel on the thrust factoring nozzle. Okay, let's proceed.
There you have it. Yes. Perfect. Okay, well, the LiPo is charging to, for the cell tester. Let's weigh this part. This is still section. 95 grams, 95 grams. Really, really lightweight. So, where's the other one? I will replace this by a nylon screw later on, because I couldn't find it where it is after the crash. Mm. Something like so. You got two holes, you'll find two holes. And this actually drew or just a screw. Okay, let's install the nozzle. That looks awesome. There you go. And let's do another test. It's almost perfect. It must be parallel. Yes, this is nice. So let me get the camera for a nice detailed view. Yes, let's test it out. Manual mode. Brilliant. Perfect. Let's glue this to the fuselage. Yes. <laughs> but first, let me show you the calibration tool. This is our calibration tool. And uh, once you installed everything, you slightly put it above. And then you can calibrate your nozzle really clearly. This is really important. Uh, so when this fits, you have an aligned nozzle compared to your airplane or else it will go making loops or yeah. Please do this to avoid crashing. And also for rudder, you can see when your rudder servo is quite off, you will have this. So make sure to align it very well. And 
there you have it. Cool. If you have questions about this tool, just let me know in the comments. Just ask. I will be there. Okay, let's glue this part to the fuselage. Can't wait. By the way, guys, this bamboo up is really fast. Really love it. Let's soon drive it first. Yeah, looks good. And there you have it, we have our thrust factor installed. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, like I said, you can adjust the bigger travel in your receiver. Um, I think tomorrow we're going to uh, finish up this uh, complete uh, airplane with all the wings and parts. And we're going also to do again a full installation of all the electronic parts. So. I hope that you really learned something about this video, how we assemble the thrust vector. That was the most asked question from you. And yeah, I can't wait to hover it again. I'm so feeling so bad that I crashed the previous model. But um, make sure this, this fuselage, by the way, without the thrust vector is 600 grams exactly. So make sure you don't make it too heavy with all the paintings. Um, 3.4 kilos is the max weight of this uh, model to have a really nice uh, hover and flight. <laughs> that looks cool. <laughs> okay guys, see you in the next video. Bye. We have plenty to go. By the way guys, um, some of you ask which part needs to be weighted so the nose part is 11 gram nose section 2 40 grams ducting one section 60 grams duction two section is 94 grams this part also 93 grams and this back part if you can reach 60 grams you'll be all fine and then you're all on track uh, for a nice hover and nice flight when you exceed this part for example this goes to like 80 grams 100 grams yeah i cannot promise if that will fly very well it will be too heavy so you got three options you got you can build your own vertical takeoff model but then i won't install all the doors to save weight i only install the top door uh, when you're making just a forward flight uh, model with the thrust vector uh, just slide the battery tray all the way into the front uh, and you, you don't need to install this uh, front EDF so total weight will be around 2.5 kilos and then you can install all the doors like I did above ok 
Okay, if you've got more questions about this uh, topic, just let me know. We also started an RC group page. You can also find me there if you have some more detailed questions. And yeah, guys, just show me your builds. Bye-bye.